Here's a topic that's been getting quite a bit of attention lately. It's um, the question of lithium in the drinking water, as in, should lithium be added? <laughs> okay, this is not actually a really new issue. I, I did a vlog about this, you know, six months or so ago. That It was already in the media. They were suggesting we should have lithium in our drinking water, and of course, I don't like the idea. But anyway, the issue has come up again, and um, I decided to investigate a bit more at this time. Here's one of the articles. This is from Big Think. This is called Dangerous Idea. August is a month of thinking dangerously. One new radical idea a day. Number one, drug our drinking water. Okay, some bioethicist called Jacob Appel uh, thinks that the U.S. government should fortify uh, the water supply with lithium. He basically says, look, science has shown that higher le levels of lithium in the drinking water are related to lower suicide rates and lower crime rates and lower rates of uh, certain uh, types of drug abuse and uh, you know you should do what's good for the collective and let the government put lithium in your water and if you don't like it well you can just go buy bottled water at the store okay I have a problem with this well for one that's not really fair because who can afford bottled water not poor people so this is a bit you know, discriminatory towards poor people because they may be forced to drink whatever's in their water. Uh, also, the science behind adding lithium is, is still fairly sketchy. There's been a little research done, but they didn't control for all variables. And mainly, I just don't think it's the government's job to medicate us against our will. So here's what I found about lithium uh, and the drinking water. Okay, here's one article from the British Journal of Psychiatry. Uh, lithium levels in drinking water and risk of suicide. Now, here's the little graph that they have. This shows that roughly the, the lower the levels of uh, lithium, the higher the rates of suicide, and the higher the late rates of lithium, the lower the rates of suicide. They, they only looked at the lithium levels in the water and they didn't look at things like psychosocial factors and um, Economic factors, I mean, economic factors, that's a big one. Uh, uh, one of the main reasons why men commit suicide is for economic reasons, like if they lose their job. This is Japan, you know how their ethics are. So these could have been big factors, but they didn't look at it. They also didn't look at any possible negative effects uh, from the lithium. So, you know, it, it wasn't a, a super conclusive study that on which, you know, you would do something like put lithium in the in an entire country's water supply. Okay, this is from the Biological Trace Element Research. Lithium in drinking water and the in incidences of crime, suicides, and arrests related to drug addictions. This was a study from Texas. It went from 1978 to 1987. And it showed that the areas that had higher lithium rate uh, levels in the water had lower rates of suicide, homicide, and rape. And also uh, lower rates of, uh, well, generally violent crime and uh, incidence of arrests for possession of opium, cocaine, and their derivatives. Hmm. Again, they, they didn't, you know, they adjusted for things like population density, but they, they didn't look at the negative effects of the lithium. So, okay, maybe lithium uh, makes you less suicidal, but it might have some other negative effects. And these are very small, like trace levels of lithium nothing like compared to what people take when they're on lithium. If you want to know a little bit about what people feel like when they take uh, you know therapeutic dosages of lithium, which is a salt, an element, uh, you check out this uh, page for example on about.com speaking from experience lithium. Well here you see several people talking about when they were on lithium and some of the side effects and one of them that struck me was that they feel disconnected. Uh, okay, let's entertain conspiracy theory here for a moment. Let's say that, you know, the New World Order wanted to um, drug the population and make them feel spaced out and give them a chemical lobotomy. Well, lithium, you know, might be a good choice because it might make people feel disconnected and they just don't care, possibly, you know, if it's in a high enough dosage. But again, like I said, the amounts in the drinking water were really, really small. So I wouldn't personally be able to jump to any kind of conclusion about this. Here's another piece in the lithium puzzle. This is from the American Journal of Epidemiology. Lithium in the drinking water and atherosclerotic heart death. 
epidemiologic argument for protective effect. So they're looking at, you know, a heart disease in terms of like hardening of the arteries and they said that uh, where there was higher lithium in the drinking water, uh, there was lower uh, atherosclerotic heart death. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there about lithium and whether it's bad for you, whether it's good for you. Here's another thing just to confound the issue. This is from News with Views, an article by Dr. Jim Howenstein, MD. How to enlarge your brain and improve brain performance. Now do remember, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. This doctor is saying here that lithium actually um, can help renew your brain cells, enhances DNA replication, damaging effects of excitotoxins such as MSG and aspartame can be blocked by lithium, can decrease areas of cell death after induced strokes by 56%, Lithium protects rat brain cells from the increased level of brain cell death caused by anticonvulsant drugs. May protect against adverse effects from mood-altering drugs, alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, uppers, downers, and marijuana, all of which cause brain damage with long-term use. Marijuana causes brain damage? Really? I, I thought that was a myth. Anyway. Abnormally functioning signaling pathways may become repaired with lithium and the aluminum felt to be a possible cause of Alzheimer's disease is chelated by lithium so it can be more easily removed from the body. Okay, so you have here somebody saying, you know, lithium is practically a cure-all, it's going to protect your brain, it's going to repair all kinds of damage. Here's the way I look at it. If the New World Order wants to kill you, the last thing they're going to do is put something in your water that's good for you. So, so either it is good for you and there's no way they're going to put it in your water, or it's bad for you and they'll find some excuse to put it in your water. But I wouldn't worry about lithium in the water too much right now because um, you know, you've got worse things to worry about like the fluoride that's already in there. But really the bottom line again is that the government has no business mass medicating you. This is the real issue. That the media is talking about the government's responsibility or duty to put this stuff in your water. Uh, the only duty that they have, as far as I'm concerned, is to provide you, provide you with clean drinking water that has been, you know, ozonated to remove pharmaceuticals and harmful things. Not to start adding things because of some sketchy science that says it might be good for you or because they want to brain control you or whatever. So that's what I found about lithium.